Let me begin by invoking mercy and compassion of our Lord and beseeching Him for His continued blessings and favors in time to come. And let me also affirm our deepest loyalty and regard to the one who declared that he has been sent down as the teacher. Ladies and gentlemen, here I stand at a very important juncture in my life as well as in the history of UMT. I am indeed delighted to pass through this moment and I feel truly very lighted since this morning. I have spent 27 years in this job and it pretty much defined what I did, what I said, where I went, whom I met, what I wrote and what I decided for myself as well as others. It is for me actually a dream. It was this job was actually for me a dream come true because I recall that it was perhaps in 1968 that uh, we came to Lahore as family and uh, our uh, Pupi Jan was living here and it was the home of actually Dr. Ansar and uh, uh, and I went to another to home of another of my aunt maternal aunt and we were sitting in the in the garden uh, on the staircase and uh, she asked me and my brother that who do you want to be in future and I don't know at that point I never you know uh, how it, it could come but I said I want to be vice chancellor but before that I recall when I was in class 3 and we were sitting together with my father all of us sitting in bed with him and my mother and he asked me I said what do you want to be and I said I want to be Imam because I would go to him, go with him to mosque and I would see this uh, and I would see this uh, saintly figure coming out of the quarters, leading the prayers and then silently going back to home. So I thought that this is the life I want, peaceful. How did it struck me, this position of Vice-Chancellor? Uh, I don't know, but when I scratched my mind, it was uh, one summer you know, at our home that uh, Vice-Principal of NED College, where my father also studied as well as taught, he and his wife, both Parsis, they visited us and they spent a day with us and uh, he was such a charming figure uh, and he talked to us uh, at length and he you know was very informal uh, and uh, uh, his uh, I liked his demeanor and I liked his uh, composure and uh, so I thought that uh, this is the position this is the type of person maybe I would like to be uh, so, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to bow my head uh, today uh, in front of my Lord who permitted me to fulfill my dream, who wrote those dreams for me to turn and turn them into reality. I know it doesn't happen uh, with everyone. I was lucky, I was fortunate that what I thought, what I saw for myself, and what I dreamed perhaps, and these perhaps are the only two positions that I ever could uh, think of in my infancy and in my you know, teenage. And uh, he wrote those things for me. And uh, it has been then my distinguished honor, my privilege, and uh, my extreme privilege to serve University of Management and Technology. 
and to do whatever I can to the best of my ability to build this institution. I truly enjoyed every moment of it and I truly remain thrilled by each passing day looking at the unfolding challenges, newer and newer problems and, uh, up and uh, seizing uh, emerging opportunities, dealing with uh, risks and threats and also uh, meeting people all the time, faculty, students, staff uh, and everyone that, come, that came my way. So I was, I remained truly excited and thrilled and I enjoyed every moment of it. And I always believe that the time that I spend here is equivalent of the time that one could spend in the worship of uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I took it as a cause, as a mission. And uh, I, and, and I never restricted or, res or resisted in any uh, in shedding or investing any ounce of energy or any second of my of the moments I remain awake uh, to spend for the cause of uh, UMT. So once again uh, I have I feel that today I should thank my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for for bestowing upon me this trust and allowing me to function and to walk out with some degree of respect and with them some degree of uh, uh, recognition in the eyes of my fellows. Uh, so much so that I actually physically also camped in myself by the side of the, by the, side of the walls of a UMT so that my days as well as my nights could be spent uh, in the shadow of uh, UMT. Ladies and gentlemen, I am also uh, grateful to the Chairman of the Board of Governors. I am also extremely grateful to my Chairman, Professor Khurshid Ahmed and members of the Board of Governors who firmly consistently and uh, wholeheartedly reinforced me, guided me and backed me at every point of my stay as rector of UMT. Governance at UMT has not been like uh, a governance in any other private sector institution. From day one, it was solid it was purposeful and they had only one agenda. They were selfless and they wanted to make this institution a credible institution. And they lent their names and expertise in order to lay down the foundation of a respectable institution in future. So that I was I, I benefited from that selfless governance and took advantage of that and it's the governance supported me all the way. As a founder, uh, like any other founder, I faced two dilemmas. Number one, uh, founders usually like to have their authority continue till their end, till death denies them the continuation of it and then secondly foundations tend to personalize everything and this is the found this is the dilemma of founders which I studied when I was studying management and entrepreneurship I made sure that I avoid the second while I stay and I think you would have noticed that unless I was invited to a conference or seminar, I kept quiet and I retained my silence and I always refused any media uh, you know, request for interview. I didn't write in newspaper and I think 
apart from the photographs of convocation, I made sure that I don't get, my photos don't get published in newspapers or in the uh, billboards, etc. So, because I learned that in order to make a good institution, all we need is good work. And if good, works, good work takes place, that work speaks for itself. And that work then draws the attention of those who want to and they can reach the institution. So I avoided that kind of personalization during my uh, stay. And I think I'm escaping the first dilemma today by voluntarily uh, handing over the charge to the next rector. This was my uh, greatest of the... This was my greatest of the wishes that I see for myself an orderly transition from myself to a new rector. And, and hence confirm the unique strength of UMT as having the forward capacity to proactively deal with the major issues. So I believe that we have courageously taken up that task. I tried to, uh, I tried to withdraw myself, uh, in fact, five years back, but then chairman and board talked to me out of it, and, and they promised that you continue for five years. And then the next five years, I really worked my heart out. And in five years, we saw a lot of uh, progress uh, within UMT, and I, maybe they were right at that point. And it was uh, rather early for me. Uh, so when I saw the, my third tenure coming to the end, so I started lobbying, and I was successful in making them agree to my proposal. That is time that we appoint a new rector. And I also emphasize that the appointment should be purely on, basis, on the basis of merit. There should be nationwide announcement and let people apply from all over the country, those who are interested. And then we set up a rector search committee and let search committee go through the candidates and select for us the best one, the most suitable in their eye. So I believe that uh, the governance of UMT has fulfilled that challenge, has uh, achieved what they wanted to, and today this institution has a new rector in the form of Dr. Uh, Muhammad Aslam. I think now, from now on, UMT will benefit from his 12 years of experience as a rector of one of the leading, super, most superior engineering institution in Pakistan, ranked number one consistently. So he brings with himself his education and his experience in science and technology and also his uh, exposure running at number one in the number one institution in Pakistan. And we have created a depth in our leadership that I would continue as chairman of ILM Trust and Board of Governors and would extend to him my full support, wholehearted support at all times, just like the way I received it from my chairman, which emboldened me and which uh, allowed me to take courageous actions to experiment and to meet you know, successes as well as uh, failures. So I think that Dr. Mohammed Aslam should also be granted the same kind of position where he can have unification of command and he can work out his way uh, by looking at the horizon in front of him and can see what's in the best interest of UMT and then take, pick up the pace so that this institution grows from here to the next level. He, I haven't had the opportunity to meet with him in any HEC or other meetings, maybe 
casually i i really don't recall so the first time i met him was when he walked into the uh, committee uh, for interview and that was the first handshake so here is again a tremendous uh, strength of umt that you can uh, that you can recognize that this university is uh, for merit and is for outstanding merit and if a person is willing to lead at, from the top position this university agrees to it and opens its door for the person and let uh, let the person lead itself the whole institution uh, in future years so this is the sign of a good institution and i hope that this will continue in future uh, uh, dr rasam i enjoy working with these people being deans and directors of the schools and institutions institutions uh, chairpersons of the academic departments directors of centers program heads uh, heads of different projects uh, uh, people who are looking after the services uh, as a university management offices and uh, they made my life uh, full of uh, pleasure and uh, enjoyable and uh, with consultation and collaboration and your uh, vision i believe that you will be even able to get better out of them and lead them to great successes and reciprocally i also hope that the tremendous amount of trust and cooperation that i received from you the love and affection that i was uh, i that i always uh, received, uh, with which uh, i i always remained overwhelmed i believe that you would extend the same in fact in greater proportion to dr aslam i am i remain most amazed by the regard and love and affection that i have received from our participants from our students and our students have been the most important asset of umt it is them who have built this institution and it is them who are now working as alumni and are vocal supporters of umt advocates of umt and uh, we take care of them by providing for excellence in their upbringing development and education and they in turn extend their whole hearted uh you know a uh, support for the development of the institution so i hope that this relationship between rector and the students rector and the participants rector and alumni rector and faculty would also continue in the same manner i wish i could have reciprocated uh the uh, the personal attachment that i received many times when people invited me to their marriage or people told me about about uh, death of someone and wanted me to be with them uh, or on other occasions from our staff from faculty from students but due to my various engagements uh, i was not uh, i never found time enough at my disposal to be with them informally so i really i i i when i look back think that i miss now doing uh, that that i feel that i miss doing is being part of them informally as a family uh, let me at this point recount the role played by my late father puram rath uh, in guiding me and in preparing me and in uh, giving boosting my confidence uh, he never wanted me to do a job and he always uh, pushed me forward to take up some challenge uh, uh, take up some risks and uh, he then extended his support and 
uh, it was always a pleasure to talk to him and uh, get his uh, good advice on the basis of this experience. Uh, since he left, I missed uh, talking to him. I missed uh, receiving any further guidance from him. But he remained a uh, kind of shadow at the time when I needed a shadow or a beam of uh, uh, light when I needed uh, something to show my way in the darkness. Uh, I would like to here pay my regard to my mother who once again who was always part of me and uh, whose uh, prayers uh, I think uh, provided me this uh, this enabled me and uh, provided me the strength to discharge my obligations uh, uh, he was uh, always uh, full of uh, she was always full of love and affection and uh, uh, I couldn't have done what I've done without uh, her uh, support uh, behind me uh, I have especially requested my wife to be here uh, this morning. Uh, I never probably insisted uh, her. She was uh, actually going to Karachi uh, this week, but I uh, requested her to delay uh, her visit to Karachi and I especially invited her to tell her that uh, I owe all of this to her. And uh, I could never find time to visit with her anywhere, uh, family or dinner or uh, what not. And she silently bore that loneliness at home and she paid the price and she sacrificed with her time and everything. And uh, at home, she did everything for me that possibly I could expect, in fact, more. Uh, I never had any problem from my home which could uh, hamper my performance uh, outside here at UMT. I would like to uh, pay my regard to my uh, beloved uh, daughter Maryam as well as my beloved son uh, Ibrahim. Uh, both of them have been part of our existence and I'm glad that both uh, uh, without my uh, any insinuation, both uh, agreed and both uh, willingly uh, adopted this uh, field of training and education and development as their lifelong pursuit. I would uh, fail my duty if I do not mention specifically one person in name, uh, Mr. Avid H.K. Shirwani. We all know about him. Uh, I met him when I started, when I came back, returned from America and I started teaching in Punjab University and he was in my class. And since then, it, we, the two of us have remained inseparable. And uh, he has been the, he has been the, I would say, the rock on which I could stand. Uh, because I moved to Lahore, I knew people in Lahore, of course. I had a lot of friends in Lahore. But uh, when I started work, I didn't know much. And it was him and uh, his, uh, he opened himself and he devoted himself. Uh, I never saw a person so loyal so faithful and so sincere and friend as, uh, as a person as uh, himself. So I again, I owe it to him and may Allah reward me for him. Uh, I, I know I've taken more time than I, than I was uh, allowed to, but uh, let it be, uh, let me complete my job. Uh, as a parting thought for all of you uh, who are here, uh, very briefly, let me quickly run down some of the fundamentals that I want all of us to remain uh, and to remain reminded of. Number one, uh, this hard, we remain too much engrossed in our, of course, scheduling of courses, assignment of courses, programs, and whatnot. Uh, but. Uh, it is important to take an overall picture of what this higher education is all about. Uh, to me, it is about transformation of society by advancement of knowledge and development of people. So whatever you do, whatever job you have, whatever course you are teaching, whatever position you hold, 
and whatever you contribute just tag it and try to see how it is contributing to the transformation of society by advancement of knowledge and development of people because we are here to do number of things but at the end of the day all of it should converge in this one equation and we should we, we need to see whether we are making this equation more powerful that is umt is contributing and directly proportional to transformation of society by advancement of knowledge and development of people i need all of us to be reminded of that uh, i would also like to uh, alert you with the link between knowledge and justice my own reading of quran tells me that knowledge is linked with justice and there is no sense of knowledge there is no sanity in knowledge there is no wisdom if in knowledge if it leads to otherwise injustice exploitation so on so forth so knowledge has to create a balance knowledge has to contribute towards justice justice in the society uh, third we all are hungry of happiness and we crave for happiness in our life a chance to smile a chance to be kind and receive the kindness uh, i feel that happiness cannot be there unless there is enlightenment based upon knowledge and there is balance and justice so only justice and balance can guarantee us the degree of happiness to which we confirm and we remain aligned to justice uh, fourth knowledge is many things and can have many different garbs and can have many different directions and dimensions but the knowledge should the knowledge that is gained by seeking the truth and knowledge that comes out of the pursuit of truth unbiased unprejudiced based upon crystalline reasoning and logical understanding and rational thinking is the one that we care for and we should value so knowledge is only classified can be classified as knowledge if it is actually consisting of truth and nothing but nothing but truth uh fifth uh if it is about justice if it is about development of people if it is about happiness based upon truth and if it is about based upon logical reason uh, uh, and reason thinking then there has to be some importance laid out in the scheme of things for the development of character because if there is no character if the person is wayward and if the person is astray then i believe that that person cannot recognize truth cannot uh, uh, lead uh, himself or herself to truth and cannot gain it cannot hold hold on to it so i think somewhere this is uh, somewhere in our uh, the things the way we lay out lay out our our our, our mechanisms and our approach for uh, higher education there has to be an emphasis for the development of character for the development of moral character moral fiber of the community and uh, then only a character based a character led person can become a host and a recipient of knowledge based upon truth uh, and i'm missing my count but let's say the next one uh, we are living in a society which all requires renewal and revival on consistent basis we have a community here of faculty student this requires revival and renewal on consistent basis a relentless uh, you know uh, pursuit of a continuous improvement that is the requirement and this needs that we try to identify the sources of mediocrity the sources of familiarity of our comfort with familiarity and sameness and we try to do things creatively critically and innovatively so i believe that revival and renewal comes when we become 
creative, critical, innovative, and we beat, we try to defeat mediocrity and the curse of uh, familiarity, and we fail to accept what is new and what is better that is coming forward. Uh, lastly, I would like to suggest that uh, we as human beings in our community will be good to each other only if we generously listen to each other and we make it a habit of showing our trust upon each other. We may err in trust and trust can be is uh, can be can lead to success or failure but i believe that in human working and in human operation and in human relationship trust is the only way which can develop the goodness and can help us uh, 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 you know can follow the path of virtue uh, and can help us develop the good self among the people when i feel that my parents have a great deal of trust in me when I feel that my friends have a trust uh, have are showing so much trust upon me that becomes my inspiration my motivation and my stimulation to hold on to that trust because then I use that trust and that trust makes my life better it helps me doing things in my life so trust is something that comes free so Bestow this trust upon your fellows, upon your students, and this trust will also contribute to the enhancement of the self-esteem of our people who are working with us, uh, self-esteem of our uh, fellow colleagues, uh, self-esteem of our uh, students, and once they realize that this teacher, this uh, administrator, and this person in authority is showing so much trust and is placing my esteem so high I believe that the natural human ability to show its goodness and to align itself to its north which is good will come out at their best and you will be able to get the best from seemingly very ordinary people that has been partly my recipe and I feel that uh, there is a great potential and further enhancing and continuing that every everywhere uh, this will not meet the eye of an accountant or someone who is doing calculations but i think it works in the real life and it makes our living and our working together uh, a better in many ways i would also like to suggest that uh, as umt was never meant to be a copy of someone some other institution to be just a small iota in the things and uh, to be just uh, an imitation of uh, something that has just come out we have always taken uh, we have spent a lot of time in thinking that what is the best that we can achieve what is it that is needed to be done what is next and whatever our mind uh, guided us and whatever we came up with together we followed that path and uh, we never felt that any stereotype or any uh, you know model or brand or uh, any other uh, leading uh, uh, you know institution is the one that we should follow yes we always uh, identified good practices wherever we could find them but then we tried to make UMT a new crystal, a new beam, a new beacon, a new fountain, and a new initiative having its own flavor, having its own color, having its own identity uh, developed, thought out by the people who are actually part of it. Uh, this brings me to the close closure of my comment. I once again, from the depth of my heart, thank you all, and I wish you all the very best in times to come. Thank you.